What's the feeling like for you going into this one compared to, to the other games that you attended before you headed away? Uh, I suppose really it's really down to a bit of experience, you know, and just having done it before and that. And you can nev never ever rep replicate the, the first ones, which is Sydney in 2000, obviously. And, uh, you know, when you're young and you're excited and you're energetic and you go to the other side of the world, obviously it's going to be... It's going to be very exciting. So you know, I don't have the same buzz buzz going to it. To be honest with you, but different different challenge, a, a different story, a different team, a different group. So you know, looking forward to it. Uh, it's the Olympic Games. So I mean, you know, it's the biggest, it's the pinnacle of, of sport really in, in, in a global sense. So I mean, very excited and you know, um, anticipating now some 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 really interesting days ahead. Yeah. And just in your memories, mm. Patsy, of, mm. of, of Olympic Games, if we go back to the first one uh, in, in Sydney, what was it like back then for you? Obviously, it was a very, very exciting time in, in, in your athletic career. Uh, of course it was, you know, and uh, 16 years ago now, believe it or not, and obviously I was younger and I was, uh, I was so, so excited, so, so excited. I uh, travelled to Dublin the night before, I can remember it well. We had national championships that weekend and, uh, you know, I, I, and then we select, you know, a few bits and pieces about selection and... Obviously, there was the Sonny O'Sullivan factor, the possibility of a medal, and you know, good performances from the team, big team, 34 athletes, and uh, we travelled. I remember, well, it's the other side of the world as well, and uh, you know, all, all of that to take all that into account. I had been, I had been to Sydney, I had sussed it out, and I had sussed out all aspects of it, sussed out the training camp uh, prior to that. So I did, a, I did a recce as you as you do for for games, um, and then. We spent a bit of time at a place called Newcastle, the way 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 north of Sydney. Spent maybe four weeks there. We got a lot of good work done there, and um, came back into the games. And you know, it's just like it's this new this environment, this village environment, whereby you're meeting all these big stars from other sports and stuff. You know, when you're travelling on the wee buses and through the village and and stuff like that. So it was kind of it was a wee bit of an awe an awe of all that initially, and then you just you get into the groove of it all then very very quickly. But it was very very exciting and. And the fact that it was Australia, and the fact that they spoke English, and the fact that it was an easy environment, it was it was really good. Yeah. Is it fair to say that would London have been right up there with them because it was seen as <coughs> as like an Irish home Olympics? It was, you know, I, 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 you're right, you're right. I seen London being being a home Olympics. Family were able to come across. Uh, people from and athletics locally were able to come across. Um, we did a training camp in a place called uh, St Mary's College out, out in Strawberry Hill in Twi Twickenham, which was which where I had gone as a student. So you know. Um, that was exciting for me on a personal level, and uh, we, you were able to transit through the city and the trains and all, you know, from the training camp, which we used right into the village, and and uh, it was it was such an easy it was such an easy environment to handle, and London was probably the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'd done a massive, massive job. They'd done a great job, and um, you know. But but every game they they make such an effort you know and there's always these panics you know before games and stuff and like this time it's Zika it's some problems with the village and all but I, everything sorts itself out you know in Athens they were saying that the village that the place mightn't be finished they were saying something else about Sydney they were saying about security if you remember in London there's always big issues you know and uh, we're going to now we're going to now to these games too on the shadow of the drugs thing the story in the background you know so. There's always issues, but um, you as a manager manage the team, you manage the athletes, and you just drive on, as they say, you know. Yeah, we'll be talking about some of those issues mm, in just sure, a moment. Sure, sure, sure. But uh, your favourite moment, your standout moments, Patsy, because <laughs> this is your last games, this is your fifth Olympics, uh, it's going to be your last as, as, as a team manager mm. of, of Ireland. So when you recap through the, the, the last number uh, of years. What, is, what really has been the standout moment? I'm sure there's, there's a whole list of them, Patsy, is uh, there? There's a whole list of them, surely, and they're all relevant to people personally, you know, but I mean, I suppose from, from, from a national perspective, Sonia's Sonia getting the medal, uh, Sonia's Sonia getting the medal in, um, in, and where were we, in Sydney, yeah. and you know, the fact that she came down that straight, and we thought, oh my goodness, she's going to get the gold medal and, and stuff like that, so, you know, there was, there was that factor, but, and and the fact at at that time at that time in Ireland and maybe 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 it would happen still you know and I think it possibly would because we had a bit of an instance of it with the soccer there in the Euros the, the country tends to stop to watch uh, something that's going well for the country uh, the whole world was going to stop and the, but I mean by the whole world Ireland was going to stop to watch her race and the fact that she did get a medal and she did so well that was that was that was a big plus so I mean I suppose that's the big memory but ach, there have been other other performances you know that people rose to the occasion. That people had been struggling and then got it together, and then there's always the emotion of disappointment and and all of this. So you have a whole parallel of life, really, mm. in 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 it all. And I went through all of that, you know. But I would say as well, actually, 
I would have managed it differently at different times. You know, mm. as you grow into a job and you grow into a position uh, from Sydney right through, I mean, I would have, you know, been very enthusiastic. I would have been nearly ready to run the race for them. I would have been big time and with them in the early days and then I stand back a bit more now and it's a more controlled situation you know so you manage differently as you get older and as you even get more experience I suppose over the last 16 to 20 years there's been a lot of change too and you've seen it both from training methods of athletes and, and the work that they have to do now and even to a situation of how the games are being run as well Patsy well there's that as well you know when I've seen that the other part of the, the learning experience that I had in my life mm -hmm. was I trained the Donegal GA senior team on two different occasions in my life, you know, and from the first time to the second time, how I had to adapt yeah. and how many other different elements had come into it, and it, you had to learn pretty fast, you know. So it was uh, one time it was in the 90s, and the other time it was in the 2000s. So that, and it's the same with anything, you know, your approach changes, um, your, your, the job changes. Uh, right now, I've got more support staff and I've got more help than I had initially. I was kind of on my own with a couple of coaches and I said, now, you, now they tend to give you more support staff and, you know, the, I, would ha I would probably say the job is easier now yeah. uh, than it was in those days because you were directly decisive, in charge, calling everything. Now you can share it a little bit, you know, and you can have an odd discussion. If it's not something that needs to be done immediately, you can have, you have that opportunity. So, uh, like, as you say, Oshin, things have changed and yes, indeed they have. Yeah, and science obviously is a huge part of, of what, what goes on now in, in, in modern day sport and to see the way athletics has mm. changed, and not just even athletics, yeah. but I'd say right across the board in all sports, mm. when you're trying to bring teams to the Olympics and to get up to a standard where you want to win a medal, Aye. science is now a huge part of it. It is a big, big, big deal indeed. It is, and you know that's more relevant than the training camp. Yeah. You know, we always, we always, do, we always do training camps. It's, it's just the nature of, of a global sport like athletics that the games that I've been involved in, with the exception of London, have been at a distance. Mm. So you do a training camp, for example, in Sydney, that Newcastle place in Athens, it was in Cyprus, in uh, Beijing, we, we, we went, would you believe we went to a training camp in Japan and came in from Japan, um, you know, so, and this time I'm way up in a city called Uberlandia. So in, in the training camp, all that science that you're talking about uh, is at play. You know, we have, a, for example, we would have, a, we would have um, a nutritionist with us, you know, we would have sports science support with us and very quite a few between massage therapists and physios you know and all of that so you've all the support that you need yeah. and uh, you know we get very we are very well supported so there is all of that but then in the individual element of each athlete's training they they have taken on board the psychology and this and the, and the physiology and the sciences of everything mm. so yes everything has changed in that in that respect towards the approach to performing you know yeah. just on, on a note of other memories of, of past olympic games uh how proud are you when it comes to working with Donegal athletes, Northwest competitors who have, who have got as far as the games and they're trying to reach the pinnacle in their sport. Well, you know, it's like the old story here in Donegal. We all kind of look out for each other, yeah. you know, and, and basically, you know, you grow you grow up with the people that are involved at the top at every level of the sport, but particularly those who are making making a name for themselves. So I was very, very happy when we got ourselves. For, for the first two games, we noticed from Donegal, and then we got into Beijing and we had Chloe. And she's now going for a third game. Now, that's a marvellous situation. Yeah. And then, obviously, Philip Dagan was there as well in, yeah. in those games. And then, on beyond that, in London, we went in with Brendan Boyce, we went in with Tory, we went in with, um, with, in with uh, Katrina Jennings, of course, and, uh, and, and, and Brendan Boyce, I mentioned. So, you know, that was good. And Brendan, now he's going for a second mm -hmm. game. And we have Tory again, and uh, we have Mark English this time mm -hmm. around as well, and Chloe again, of course. So it's, um, and, and the, story of, the, the story of all stories, I, I think, Sinead Jennings, yeah. I, I think. I think I think she's unbelievable. I mean, I've said this on Highland so many times mm -hmm. from way, way, way back. I just have so much admiration for her yeah. and her determination and her approach. So it's brilliant to have those people on board, you know. And hope hope this time I might get get an opportunity to have have, have to look see it some of them because I've never ever gone in any of the games to watch anything else. Yeah. And I'm kind of thinking this time as I go, well, now if I get a wee chance for half of a day someday, I'd like to go and watch some of the Donegal competitors. Yeah. So that would be a special occasion as well. Mm. Let, let's talk about these Donegal people more in depth. Um, we'll mm. start with Sinead because she has got so many knockbacks and mm. kickbacks in her career and trying to make it as far as, as the Olympic Games, both on the boat <laughs> on, on on the bike. And somehow she has dug, dug deep in this last mm. couple of years to have, have another go. And at 39 years of age now, she's nearly 40 and she's heading to a game. Mm. That's, a f that's a fantastic achievement. So it is because a lot of athletes would have, could have went the other way with the, with well, the knockbacks exactly. that they got. Well, exactly. And when you, know, when you go back even to the point of view that when she was the World Skulls champion, you know that there was no, there was, that event didn't, wasn't in the Olympics. Yeah. And, and she coped with that. 
and uh, dealt with that. That was a great, that was a great achievement in itself. And then she coped with that, and then she moved on, and then she tried. You know, I honestly think that she could have. She was had the capability to make Olympic games and about four different things. One yeah. had been triathlon, of course, yeah. and there was the cycling and there was the rowing and, and stuff. So, you know, there's uh, she was as a young girl, she was a good athlete. They did everything. So she was, but but her mentality and her drive and her commitment to it all with a young family and her studies initially, uh, it's just it's just it's just brilliant. Yeah, and I know speaking there that she's targeting a medal, and that's the right frame of mind. You have to be yeah. in Pats if, yeah. if, if you're going yeah. to yeah. to games. There's no point in setting <coughs> no. them for for trying to progress to a certain day. No, that's it right. has to be a medal, does it? And you know what? I, I, and their own people I talked to the guy, their own guy, and mm. he, he 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 some time ago now this conversation was held and. He did say that he, he wouldn't rule it out, you know, with herself and, and Claire Lamb. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, look, she she she'll go red. She'll red. She'll rock it the best she can, you know. Yeah. And Chloe McGee mentioned her as well. Chloe's mm. going to three games. She's looking to become the the first Irish badminton player to win two matches at a games. Yes. At, at, at the one game, she's yes. already set a record where mm. she has won matches at two games, That's which right. was never done before. Yes. Now she's trying to do two and and the one games, mm. and she says that she's probably in the best shape and probably the fittest she's ever been mm. in, in her career with mm. the way badminton has developed particularly in, in, in the last two years and if she gets a kind draw we could see Chloe making mm. some headlines that would be massive because I mean you know I, my memory of Chloe was Beijing uh, this young girl running down the stairs and I thought right that's Chloe McGee and we had never spoken although we yeah. lived close, to, close beside each other she's in her sport and I'm in my sport and, and stuff she may have competed in the school sports when, when you know for, for a full centre yeah. way back some years ago but but we never ever met so that was that was that was that and you know obviously obviously you, you, you watch everything that she does mm. since then and you know, she if she were to do that, it'd be great. And not only her 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 story is the story of, the, of her family as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. the whole the whole input. I mean, for example, I remember sitting in the back of a car in London uh, with three McGees. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, 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 they were there in support teams and everything else in manager manage, management capacity. Uh, and um, you know, they were so 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 embedded in the whole situation, mm -hmm. even in our training camp in London. Uh, and then onwards from that to, into the games and Chloe. So no, 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 no. It's a it's a lovely story. It's a brilliant story. It's a it's a story that Donegal should be proud of. Really. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to your athletes now on on the track. Mm. Uh, Larry Kenny's Mark English. Uh, Mark had a bit of an injury in the early part of the year. He's starting to come back to form. He had two recent races there. Um, it's a big games for Mark Sodas. He's already medalled at, at big championships, mm. but but this is the one that he wants to do something special on Patsy. Um, can Mark, can I do it? Well, you know, go back to where he's at yeah. at the moment, like, and, and uh, you know, as we all know, he was injured for a few months there, and he dealt with that, and he's come back, and he ran in the A's, he ran 147-odd, and uh, last Friday night in London, in, 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 a, in a full stadium, he, he ran 145, and so he's in a 145 zone athlete right now. Yeah. So that, that was, and, and he's happy with that, he's, mm. he's happy with his progress to that point. Um, you know he's got three weeks left. Um, yeah. You know to to he, he has to perform. Three weeks is a long time in terms of sharpening up. Um, you know he hung on very very strongly that on Friday night, and you know he I think I think he he continue to progress. I think the training camp will be helpful to him, and I think he'll handle it very well. And I think you know, but he he he's, he only has to have one thing in his mind right now: he must get out of the out of a round, get out yeah. of the first round. You know, yeah. if he, if he could get into a semi final, then let's see. Yeah. You know, but if he get out of that first round that would be vital for him because it was a great learning experience for him in Moscow at a World Championship. We were at the World Championship in Moscow some years ago and he didn't get out of the first round and it was a big gunk for him, you know. Mm. So that and it also I'm sure it was a very good learning experience for him. And uh, you know, he's progressed through European levels for since mm. and we know we know that we know that he's such a talented athlete and it, but he's but there is that thing he's been he, he lost a bit of training mm. but uh, Recent indications are that he's he's coming he's coming he's coming good maybe yeah. at the right time. Uh, it's his best one forty four, isn't it? It is indeed. So it does is he same. need to get to that level to be to, to make a final? No, I don't. You see, the championship is yeah. different. Different. You see, mm -hmm. you take Dick London when he ran one forty five last Friday night. That was a paced race. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was a guy in there to pace the race. Uh, boys like Amos and Bossy were following the pace, mm -hmm. uh, and it was going to be a fast, 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 fast race. I mean. Earlier in the week, um, Radisha ran 143. So, I mean, at the end of the day, they, those are paced races. Mm. Championship races are really about how you, how, you know, it's yeah. a different story. It's sometimes, sometimes championship races, which tends to suit him, can be a kick off 150 or 200 when right, you yeah. wind it up. And, uh, you know, so, no, no, I think, I think uh, championship races suit him. Mm. And uh, he, he handles 
he, he races very well. Yeah. He races very intelligently. He executes very well. So he's a good. He, he's a, he's the right man for that environment. Yeah. So it's just it's just can he can he can he? You asked me a question about well, 145, 145 could get him into a semi final, and yeah. you know then. You know, let's see then. It's again, it's a, it's it's a, like playing chess then. Mm. After that again, you know. Yeah. yeah, and I suppose that the the mental, the state of mind that that young these young athletes mm. have to be in at, at mm. championships is, mm. is crucial well, to this process. Crucial, yeah. And athletes can train as hard as they can, mm. but how do you suck that those extra percent out 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 of an athlete? What's what's key in doing that so they can perform <coughs> on on the bigger stage better? Well, if the athlete comes physically one hundred percent, they've got to be mentally one hundred percent, and you got the, you know it's all about percentages. And if they get, if they can get all the percentages, then you know I would have seen, for example, Rob Heffernan. I've seen him come into championships, you know, just come into championships, and then I've seen him come into championships ready to eat, eat guys. You know, just yeah. I mean, in Moscow again, I'm relating to that with where he won the world title. He was just so up for it. He was just so aggressive. He was just so up, and he controlled it, and he was ready for it. Um, I was in Rome with him recently, and he wasn't as up for it. Now. I'm hoping that his preparation in recent mm -hmm. has got him together again, and I understand that it has. So basically, you know, no, uh, the mental, 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 mental confidence. I mean, you, you can't. It's a scare. The Olympics are scary. The Olympics are scary. You don't appreciate the athletes. Probably don't even the athletes that haven't been there before. They may have been to other championships, but the Olympics are different, yeah. and it's a, you're, you're really it's a scary environment, and you need to be able to control it. And back to Mark English, he he'll, he'll manage it. Yeah. You know, how, how do you how do you prepare your athletes for that? Well, you, you see, the yeah. Well, you see, this is the thing. You, well, you obviously have team meetings, yeah. and you talk about it, and you you talk about it over lunch, and you talk about it at training, and you talk about it coming from training and back from training, and you kind of you kind of try to prepare them and get them to remain focused. Yeah. The, the danger, this is why we don't go into the village too early either. For example, yeah. people will be no doubt saying, were you in the opening parade, Patsy, mm. or were you this and this? No, 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 I wasn't in the opening parade because we, we weren't there, yeah. possibly. I've been in a couple of opening parades, but other, other times I haven't been because we didn't go in. So you hold mm. your athletes out and you only go in about two or three days because you're always concerned about them losing focus and that big, mad environment a scary environment of the Olympic Village mm. where you know you have NBA basketball players like the best in the world walking around mm. where you have you know where you have, I remember I remember in where was busy but boys like Messi and Ronaldinho mm. and all these characters you know and you know you could get you could get sucked into that yeah. and bolt and you know what I mean mm -hmm. and uh, they're sitting at that table and you're at this table and for you young young people coming in um, you know the, the top tennis players in the world are sitting there everybody the number ones are there so basically and 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 you you can get lost in the village because it's like a big town, you know. Mm. And you know, whereas you have a very strong strong relit is the best way to use it when they're in the camp. But when you get into the village, you can lose them if you don't be very yeah. careful. So you have to prepare to keep a bloody good eye on them and keep them yeah. focused, you know. And just just go with the flow without upping the ante too much and let mm. them roll into it without them, you know. I mean, go for it, you know. Yeah. Let's go back to the athletes. Yes. Uh, Brendan Boyce, um, mm. obviously training with, with Rob Heffernan. Uh, Brendan's looking for an improvement on his first mm. games in mm. London. Mm. And I do know that he's working very, very hard and training hard over the last couple of months. Mm. And, and he, he really wants to better himself at these games. He does, and I think he'll PB, you know, a ring yeah. card to plan, I think he'll PB, you know, his training has been excellent. I mean, his commitment and his attitude has been excellent. And he's, he's currently in Guadix as we speak mm -hmm. here right now. He's back... He's back, you know, he's back about a week in Cork and then he's coming in later and he's going directly into the village. He's not yeah. coming to the camp. But he's been, they've been, they've been in the mountains, the Sierra Nevada mountains in Granada um, for the last month, basically, you know, with Rob and Alec, Alec Wright, who's the other walker. Uh, Alec is a 20k walker, first of all, so he's coming with mm -hmm. us and he's coming back early. But uh, he's, he's, he's a very, 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 very hard worker, mm -hmm. you know, he's, yeah. I mean, I mean, last week they did a 40k session in serious heat, you know, and all indications were very, very good. And and uh, in Guadix, and basically everything's positive. So you got to stay healthy, got to stay healthy, and got to remain focused. He has the experience of the games before. He has the experience of uh, world championships, mm. walking stuff. So he, he he's a pretty experienced guy at the stage, you know. So I have no worries about him. Mm. Um, I just want him to perform PB, you know. Yeah, and you mentioned Rob Heffernan as well. Mm. Uh, and Rob, of course, got the bronze from mm. from, from the last mm. games. Mm. Um, and yes, you know, just interrupt yeah, you. That yeah. was one. Of, that you're talking about memories. You know, yeah. about earlier, about memories. One, one of the things, actually, memories was a, kind of a, an emotional, sad memory. Was mm. sitting on the mile 
with my arms round um, a media boy's cup a picture of yeah, myself and Rob and, and you know he was devastated yeah. because we knew the Russian guy was yeah. on drugs mm -hmm. and uh, he, he was fourth as you know mm -hmm. and he walked unbelievably unbelievable performance and uh, there was no reward for mm -hmm. it there was no podium for him and there was these thousands of Irish people on the road there was thousands upon thousands at this walking and and uh, and he wasn't going to be rewarded so we had to deal with that that was a yeah. big it was a big challenge for me as a manager it was a big challenge for him as an athlete and he, he's been now rewarded he will be rewarded with, with the medal but it's never going to be the same. But that was a, that's, that was a memory that stood yeah. out for me, you know, sitting in an oil air conditioning yoke at the side of the mall and thinking, holy he heavens, mm. and trying to, trying to convince the Irish media the story's not over yet. Yeah. You know, and they really weren't all that interested, to be mm. honest. And I remember saying to a couple of Irish journalists at that time, well, this may not be the end of the mm. story. But, I mean, as far as they were concerned, because you do get media at the Olympic Games, Irish media at the Olympic Games, that uh, you never, ever see anywhere. And yeah. it just happened to be because of the Olympic Games, mm. so they weren't really interested in the fact that we felt that the boy was in drugs. You know mm. what I mean? And uh, but it's not, obviously the point has now been proven and it's very well yeah. documented. But but um, that was that was Rob. That was a memory. Yeah, yeah. He's he, he's in good shape. I think that's the question you asked me. Mm. He's in good shape, and um, that's, these sessions yeah. are going well. And I would love to think. That, I think I think he will be very competitive. Yeah. And him being very competitive, he's going to be he's going to be going looking yeah. for a medal. And so we talked about the the mental attitude of Sinead Jennings earlier, having yes. knocked back. Yes. Not making games yeah. but Rob Heffernan's in, in a different place because he ha mentally he had to deal with that knowing that somebody mm. had cheated mm. and he deserved a medal mm. and that just were going to fight it and didn't know whether they, whether they were going to get it mm. or not so that's, that's a totally different dynamic mm. there from, from that point of view uh, well you know what you do there Russian you take it you take right. it on the chin at the time and you don't let it you, mm. you don't you, 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 we, we never really sat around much and talked about guys taking drugs because yeah. you can't afford to get, go down that route right. because your, your head's going to get softer mm. then you're going to make allowances for yourself yeah because you're going to have this thing built up that these guys are better anyway. Mm. So you have to think you're as good as them anyway, mm -hmm. whether they're taking drugs or not. So, I mean, we don't have many conversations, and if the conversation even would begin, I would politely kind of stop it, because, you know, we've got to stay in this environment where we think we can beat them anyway. Yeah. And uh, and basically, so, yes, he did, and he dealt with that. And this, for him, this is his fifth Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. um, that's a massive record, I mean. And, and you, and you kind of get... You kind of relate to, to you know, just take, take for example, I'm talking about him for a second, Rob Heffernan. Yeah. Um, I, I, you relate particularly to a fellow like him because I have been on the journey with him for about, for maybe 20 years. Yeah. You know, I managed him as another 23 at European level and then he became, you know, what he became. And we went to Seville for a World Championship in 99 and then we moved on to, 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 to the Olympics and I've been there with him every step of the way for major games, you know. Yeah. So you've seen, you've seen, You've seen it all. You know mm. what I mean. So you're really privately in your head. You just want them to do well. Mm. You know. Back to, to some of the other athletes. Mm. Uh, Tori Pina, the pole vault. Uh, she'll be looking to improve on her previous uh, mm. Olympic game, and mm. she's working very hard. We don't see her too often over here because because she's uh, based Phoenix, in, uh, she's based in America, mm. Mm. and uh, her preparation has it all been going according to plan? Has it, Patsy? Mm. Her preparation has been going extremely well, and uh, this is her second games. Uh, she's based herself in more recent years in Phoenix, and she's got a lot of good support there. Uh, it's, it's a U.S. Olympic center, training center, and they took her on board, you know, which was a big plus for her. Um, and she, she, you know, she's got up to an Irish record of 460. She's six-time Irish senior champion. Uh, you know, while she's based in America, um, her just to, for quickly to say her her background is. Uh, her grandmother was from Derry, and her family are around Derry and Muff, Coyle, and and McDonald. That that's the background, of her background. Um, her introduction. She's she's from Cal born in California. Um, uh, she competed out of Finn Valley, and she went to went went to university in California, uh, and came to my, came to prominence when she got third in the NCAAs, which is a big thing in the states. And um, her introdu introduction to Ireland initially was through Irish dancing. And uh, you know she came to dance in the World Championships and all that kind of stuff. So she she's very aware of the Irish thing yeah. and grew up in the Irish thing. So um, and she's she, she's a really lovely lovely girl to deal with. Um, I'm just hoping that she hasn't had a great and she would admit this. Her championship performances haven't been good. Mm. And you know you would love to think that she could hit it. This this mm. will be her last games. This will be her yeah. last. This will be her last majors as well. I say she'll retire after this. You know, right. and um, she may 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 decide to change her mind. But can I she get, make the final, can't she? She make the final, make the final. It depends what the qualifying height is going yeah. to be, and we don't know that. You see, yeah. I mean, I mean, four sixty her PB 
would make the final. So if she PBs, mm. yes, she can make the final. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, some of the other athletes that, that are going out with you, medal contenders, Patsy, can Ireland, can Ireland perform here? Extremely well, and take back a couple of medals. Uh, well, I think I think no, I think that I think I think that we'll be relying a lot on Rob yeah. Heffernan, and I think we'll also then when we knock that back, then we'll be looking to, you know, to see how Kira McGean yeah. can progress. Um, were she to get into the final, you know, we would like to, we would like, we would, we would, we would feel that we have done extremely well and performances wise if people, a few others got to mm. finals, yeah. uh, you know, and then when you get to finals, you never know, but just to get to finals, I think. I think this this is where we're at at mm. this particular time. Uh, you know, if we can get a few people into finals, um, if we can get a medal from Rob, or or maybe Kira, um, you know, or whoever. Um, but you know, it needs to be just bang on every day for whoever's yeah. going to do it. And um, but per, I would just look. I would look for performances, mm. and um, that's the answer. The way I handle that question, really, Oshin, is if they perform. You know, to their uh, to their ultimate, mm. and you know, th what more can they do? You know, if that gets them there, yeah, brilliant. You know, but as long as they do that, you know, that's yeah. that's the requirement, really. That's what all the training has been about. And you always have to guard against, and this is the thing you got to guard against. You don't want this attitude that that they have made the Olympics mm. and then the story is over. Yeah, that they have qualified, which is a massive thing to do. In fairness, it's fairness mm. it is. It's massive, massive, massive achievement to make the Olympic Games, but you don't want a mentality where wherein they have just made it, and they're happy that they've made it, and then they switch off. And I've seen that happen. Yeah. I've seen that happen. I've seen two things happen. I've seen that happen, and I've seen people just melt because mm -hmm. the pressure got to them. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, I, you get experience. You were asking me about experiences over management. You, you get that experience. You know, you can see it days away. Mm -hmm. You can see it days away, and sometimes you can't change. You can't change it. You, you just can't. You can't. You can't. I've seen it even with Gaelic teams too that mm -hmm. I was involved with over the years. Uh, I remember doing a golf team one time. We were beaten by Monaghan. Would you believe in Cruel Park way back years ago? And I could see it. Days, I said so many days away. I, I knew. I knew from the reaction and training that we weren't. We weren't. We weren't right. rolling. You know. Yeah. And it's just. It's just. It's probably some experience that you gain in your internally in your head. You know. Um, and you can read it. So, well, the answer to, to short shortcut it. You know. Focus to remain and get good. You know, strong yeah. performances. Does the team get a lift if there's good performances early on, not just on the track, but in earlier other sports and the games? Does, does the entire Ireland team get a, get a lift? Patsy? Well, you do. Ah, you do. There's a good tone set mm. there from the outset. Ah, you do. Ah, you do because there will be an atmosphere yeah. then, you know, and we're all in the same housing, you know, so yeah. you're going to get that. But, but, um, you know, sport, sport by its nature is a selfish game, mm. and um, you know, I would love to say, and and the answer is yes, of course, of course, of course, of course, but. When you're with the athlete, athletes, you really only give a damn about the athletes. Yeah. And, you know, of course you would be over the moon if anybody else gets medals. The boxers mm -hmm. tend to be brilliant, yeah. you know, and they're in the environment and they're good characters, you know, and that all that all can relate and be very positive. So, th yes, that atmosphere would be brilliant. Um, but the environment is so huge that you may not, you may not knock into them, you know, mm -hmm. because you're staying focused and you see we're on at the end. Yeah, we're the athletes. The athletics is on the last ten days, nine, ten days. So, you know, we have to stay in our own wee shell, pretty much. You know, and um, and even even remain removed from it all. You yeah. know, so it's 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 difficult to understand. Listen to this interview, but that's where it's at. Mm. And but yes, obviously, obviously, anybody from Ireland getting anything, you know, it's just a big massive boost, a massive boost. Yeah. yeah. Where's Where's the Olympics going, Patsy? With because what we've seen now in recent years, and you've dealt with it hands-on, particularly mm. in London, knowing that there was cheating and doping going mm. on, and now we've seen what happened this week with Russia and the decisions that have been made, and uh, the swimmers and, and the mm. rowers have been banned, and there's go go going to be a few more. What's the future for, for the Olympic Games when we're dealing with issues in the environment that, that's there at the moment? I, I think the Olympics will always survive as a big thing. You know, I think that, that we'll, get, we'll get over this. You have to be positive. Mm. I think, you know, I think... In fairness, my own sport, athletics, which was wrecked with this drug stuff, and um, it, it took a serious hit, as did cycling in a previous time in life. I think that other 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 federations need to take a similar a similar approach. You know, um, not only to Russia's getting the hit right now, and I mean there's been systematic government involved in doping, but there are other countries doping. I mean, we we're, we're clear on who's doping. We know who's doping. But um, you know, get, get you know, 
de these countries aren't dealing with anti-doping. They're not mm -hmm. dealing with issue of doping. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, this is the problem. I mean, I, I could na I've named them time and time again. Countries like Turkey and, 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 and Kenya and, and Morocco and places like that. You just look at them and you think, you know what I mean? This is mm -hmm. this is not right. But but uh, and also Belarus, Belarus, mm -hmm. you know. But um, you see, there has been a hist if you go into the history of the Olympic stuff, you know, there's been big issues before. I mean, mm -hmm. there's been boycotts. There's been, yeah. you know, in Los Angeles there was boycotts. In Moscow there was boycotts. Mm -hmm. um, politics is never far away from sport. It's it's it goes hand in hand, yeah. you know. Politics and sport at a, at that global level, you know. I, I think one of the one of the examples of how the, the AOC appeased the Russians this time, uh, Rushinova, you know, the the, the whistleblower Gerd, for yeah. example, um, you would have expected that she'd be allowed to compete. Mm -hmm. And as you know, as of yesterday, she's been now banned. She's not been not been allowed to compete. But that simply is to appease the Russians because they would see her as a traitor, really, that she did the whistleblowing thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes to try and get to a position where you know life can move on. But I think it'll I think it'll take Russia quite a while to move on because their culture they're not accepting it. You see, yeah. they're in denial. You know, mm -hmm. countries like that are in denial. They they they're, they're throwing it off politically that it's a political thing. And uh, it's not political. I mean, you know, they, they're doping in yeah. the story and they've gone to great lengths to dope and, you know, they've, they've got their police and they've got everybody involved in it all. It's, 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 a different, it's a different culture. It's a different country. It's a different approach. They never change their culture. And, you know, we in the West find it hard to understand, mm. you know. And it'll take a long time for them, for their, their mindset to change their parts. But is the IOC, was the hand not head, heavy enough? Was the punishment not severe well, enough, do you that's, think? That's what, people, that's what people would say. Mm. People would say that, you know, I think it, there's a balancing act going on here about keeping the thing together mm. and thing, and only time will tell, you know. Um, you would like to think that other federations would take a strong position, but then tennis came out like a shot and said everybody was able to take part yeah. within, within hours. Mm. So it, it's it's it's... It's. I answered the question as I seen. Yes, they should have. They should have left Russia out. Yeah. But that wasn't going to happen, obviously. Yeah. Let's go back now to, to your own story, Patsy. Mm -hmm. um, let's go into the final part of the interview. Uh, you've had a lot of personal sacrifice mm -hmm. to, to be mm -hmm. where you're at mm -hmm. uh, today throughout the years and and building to get to the position of Ireland team mm -hmm. manager and then to continue that for for such a long time, Patsy. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's 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 been an interesting story. You know, I mean how did I survive for so long, for yeah. example, you know, because I would have thought that, I remember telling my wife that, that promising her actually that Sydney would be my one and only game, so there'd be more, <laughs> <laughs> there'd be more <laughs> traveling around the world. And now when I told her recently yeah. that uh, everybody says now that's your you finished my but still nobody <laughs> believes me. And, uh, and um, but no, I think um, I've seen that, I just got up and got on with it every day. Mm. And uh, I, I, kinda, I, like, I like being in that environment. Mm. And so, I push to be in that environment, and I, I, if I say so myself, I'm good in that environment, mm. and I know it very, very well. And you know, you take a situation now. I've travelled for thirty hours to get in the next day or so into into Rio. Once I hit the ground, I know what to do. I know where to do. I know where it's at, and I know what what's need. I know the needs and the, the whole thing in terms of support and everything. So, um, through over the years, I, I'm pretty. And I know the old sport and say that too, you know, I kind of know it and I know what is a performance and what's not really a performance. And and, I, and, and one of the things that stood to me was the old Donny Gall's straight up answer, you know, nah, no good, that's not good enough or whatever, you know, I told them as it was, you know. Mm. And sometimes, and I find this now going on a lot, everybody's clapping everybody in the back, you know, and everybody's, and Facebook's part of this, you know, yes. and everybody likes everything. And, you know, I, I don't like everything because mm. I just say, oh, Jesus, just steady up here, you know what I mean? And I don't jump on that bandwagon and I try to see it as realistic as I see it. Mm. And uh, I think that stood to me as well, you know. Mm. And I haven't been impacted by, ah, you know, you're going to get into money's a row, you know, you're mm. going to get into money's a thing. And, I, and I've been tough, tough enough to battle to battle through all that. And, and um, you know, probably as, as it went on, I got tougher and, and stronger and mentally stronger. So... I kind of knew where I wanted to go, and I just hung in there, and yeah. and um, and that, and you know, survived basically. Yeah. And it's not easy to survive at the t at the top because there's always you know you're going to go man first of all, yeah. and they'll think this should be a job, don't be some Dublin yeah. boy or something, you know, yeah. and um, you know, and but I made it difficult for them. Yeah, you have to fight your corner. Oh, you have to fight your corner, and I always did, you know, in every every aspect of my life, you know, and it's probably probably my personality to be mm -hmm. honest. Yeah, uh, like an athlete. Do you still feel that you're top of your game? 
I, I think I'm on top of my yeah. game. I, 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 um, I do, as I said to you earlier in the interview, yeah. Oshin, I, I, um, I do it differently. Mm. I have to wee, work a wee bit harder at it mentally. Mm. Um, to, you know, I find it, I find it, believe it or not, I find it more difficult to get excited. Mm. Um, and you know, in my, in my early days, I would have jumped up and down. I would have. You know, I would have been, whew, I'd have been whipping it out. You know, now I can stand there, and there can be performances, really classy stuff going on with me. And you know, for I'll give you an example. I was in, I was in uh, uh, my relay team in Amsterdam there a couple of weeks ago. They ran a very, very, very good time. The men four by one, uh, and they ran uh, around about uh, thirty nine fifty eight or something like mm. that. You know, yeah. and they all came in, and they were rightfully so, rightfully wild happy. You know. But I, f I, f I stood and I looked at them and everybody was bouncing off them and thinking, I said, lads, 16 years ago, I had a really team around 1320, 3920. You're going to your heads here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's get this in perspective. You, you really did really, really well. Mm -hmm. But 16 years ago, 16 years ago, mm -hmm. I had a team that ran 3920 in Sydney. So, I mean, we just need to put everything in perspective. Right. Why, why the decision to stop now? Why is this this, this your last game? What's the, what was the factors in you, you calling it, Patsy? I, I kind of just, I kind of, well, I, I kind of, it's my last Olympics. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to go on for another cycle. Um, four years following it. I want to see if I can live life without it as well. Um, you know, people, sometimes both athletes and managers and people involved in a certain level of sport, uh, you know, sometimes they find it difficult to deal with life. You know, for example, there's nobody going to be phoning you. You're not going to be impacting. You're going to see stuff. You're going to be frustrated, but you're not part of that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how I'm going to handle that. But I, I do know, Oshin, that um, that the travel. I've come. To, I've come to hate Thanks the travel. You. I've come now. My now a couple of days to go now from to traveling. The only thing that's in my mind is this fucking journey. Yeah. And um, you know, and how am I going to manage this journey? I want me. When my feet hit Sao Paulo, which we're flying into from Frankfurt, and then I get another flight, I think, thanks be to heavens, we're now in Sao Paulo. <laughs> and just, and you know, but once I'm there, that's grand. Yeah. But I just, I just don't like to travel. And you know, that's the problem. You know, mm. all these, stu all this stuff has been all over the world, yeah. you know. And, you know, but the other great thing for me, which doesn't happen normally with managers at that level, is once I'm back on deck in, at Finn Valley or in Donegal, I can relate immediately to the kids. And I just switch. And I have this. I have. A, I have a set myself again. I have an ability to switch from, from, just young ones. You know that you hear. You hear me chatting about every weekend. I get excited about them more so. You know than anything now. Yeah. And you know I'll, I'll still have that. So I mean, I want to keep driving that on as well. You know for for another few years and and to the best of my ability. But not the travel. I would say the travel is the thing that's got me to make up my mind as much as anything. Plus. Getting older as well, and and uh, and you, you asked a very you asked a very relevant question earlier. Do you are you top of your game? I I, I think I'm top of my game, mm. but um, I think it's time for somebody else. Yeah, you mentioned the young kids there. Mm. Your this is your last Olympics, but will you have a hand maybe in, in helping along some future Olympians well, for the next couple of years? Well, there's there's a whole lot of parallels to that answer. Yeah. Do you know what it is, Ashin? You, you, you know, I have this primary school athletics thing that goes on every year. It's gone on for 40 years plus that I started young, young mm -hmm. when I was a young man. And basically, to be honest, I just keep turn, churning out all these young people and just I keep supporting them to the point as much as they want and just have to hope that, 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 that you know, that people will come mm -hmm. through. Now, currently, there are many good youth, you know, 17, 18, 19 year old young kids, mm -hmm. good. Um, but it's a it's a long it's a long road for to, to another level, yeah. you know. So you just got to continue to do what you do and support them. And if they were to get to that level, you would have to have to have to have to support them all the way. But you know, you always have to put a bit of a rider on it and saying it's it's there's so many levels, so many levels to get to. You know, people take for granted. We're lucky in Donegal. They kind of take for granted uh, Mark Ingnes. They take for granted Sinead Jennings, Chloe McGee's, and that. But the work rate, the performance, the focus—you know, their own personal drive—it's they have come through as from kids up, and it's taken them maybe 15 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? 15 years of training every day, and doing it every day, and enjoying it, and still being motivated to, to continue. And I would like to—I would love to be part of something like that, certainly. Mm. And, and I'm still trying to get people closer and closer to that. But it's—it's—it's. It's, it's, um, I'm not going to say it's easy. Yeah. Just finally, then. 
um, your last games. What do you mm. hope to get out of it, Pat? Say what? What do you hope to get out personally? And then uh, obviously for well, the well, personally, for the I hope team. I enjoy it. Yeah. I, ho I hope I hope I can enjoy it. I hope I can relax enough to enjoy it. I, I, you know, I tend to get too stressed up internally in my own head. I hope I can relax. I hope yeah. I can, you know, I come out of it healthy. And uh, you know, and I'm I'm smiling when I hit the deck in Dublin, whenever the end of August or whenever it is. And hopefully. We'll have something to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Patsy, many thanks for coming Thank you. on. And we wish you all the best. Thanks, Arshin. And uh, we'll see you smiling hopefully, in Dublin Airport when you come. Thank all you right, very much. Sir. Best Good luck, luck to you. All right, Arshin. Thank you.